This video is about chapter 25 on paired samples and blocks. And in this video, we'll talk about the paired t-test and the paired t-interval. Here is a situation about speed skating. So in speed skating, you have two skaters that start at the same time, one on the inner lane and one on the outer lane. Okay, and halfway through the race, they switch which lane. Um, and so you would think that there isn't really a difference between starting on the inner lane or the outer lane because you're going the same distance. Okay, but after looking at years and years of data, uh, perhaps there is a difference between, you know, an advantage to starting on one lane or the other lane. Okay, perhaps, for example, maybe it has to do with, um, you know, at, at the very end when it's most crucial to push to the end and win the, the race, being on the inner lane gives you the advantage or something like that. I don't know. Um, but is there an advantage to being, to starting on the outer lane? Okay. Now, the thing to point out is that these two groups are not independent. Okay, so I can't do a two-sample t-test. Um, even if I wanted to, if I looked at this mean compared to this mean, which would be a two-sample t-test, you'd find there really isn't that big of a difference between the two means. Okay, the difference that we're most interested in, because the data naturally comes in pairs, we're looking at this difference and this difference, the difference between each pair of numbers, okay? Um, and this becomes what's called a paired t-test because the data is naturally paired together, okay? So what you look at is this difference between each pair of numbers. And by the way, if they don't give you um, the pairwise differences, um, what you do is you type this into list one, this into list two, and do um, the function list one minus list two, and this is the stow button, to store that into list three, and it will put all those pairwise differences in there for you, okay? Then you perform a one sample t-test on your calculator using those differences, using list three, okay? There is no paired t-test function on your calculator. Um, you have to create the paired um, you know, the, the, the paired differences, and then do a normal t-test on those differences, okay? But as you're doing the test, you do not call it a one-sample t-test, okay? It is actually a paired t-test, which is perhaps part of the reason why you must state the test you're doing is because you can't tell from the computation which one you're doing. Um, you have to state it as a paired t-test, but in your calculator, you're using the one-sample t-test function. I hope that makes sense. So here's a summary of the paired t-test. Um, when the conditions are met, which are below, um, we are to test whether the, the paired differences are different from some hypothesized value, usually it's zero. So usually your null is that the mu of the differences is equal to zero. Now notice that this does not say mu sub one minus mu sub two. That's a two sample hypothesis. I'm looking only at the differences and so it's mu sub d, okay? Um, where the d's are the pairwise differences and mu sub zero is almost always zero. And this statistic, which should look like all the other ones, is your, uh, from your, the difference from your sample minus your hypothesized difference over the standard error, which should look familiar by now, s sub d over the square root of n, okay? And there's n minus one degrees of freedom because it's, a um, one sample t-test is actually the computation of this, okay? The assumptions and conditions should look pretty familiar to you. There is a new one of the paired data assumption uh, that we assume that this data is coming to us naturally paired together. In this case, um, they were inner and outer lane were naturally paired together. Um, and so that condition is satisfied in this um, problem. Okay, um, independence assumption that each pairwise, you know, should be taken independently of the other. Um, it should be drawn randomly. Um, the 10% condition, you shouldn't sample more than 10% of your population. Um, and then the nearly normal condition also should be checked for the differences, not for each individual, not, not for each sample, but for those differences. Um, is that, are those differences, you know, nearly normal? Are they skewed? Um, is it a large sample? Things like that. So 
was there a difference in speeds between the inner and outer speeding skating um, lanes at the 2006 Winter Olympics? Okay, so there's five steps to a hypothesis test. The first step is to state your null hypothesis, which is the mu of the differences is equal to zero. And mu sub zero, um, was there a difference is the question. So I'm going to say mu sub d is not equal to zero, and my alpha level I'll use is 0.05. Okay, um, checking my conditions. Okay, um, I'm assuming that it was randomly chosen which person was inner and which one was outer. outer. Um, I don't know if that said that um, in the book. Okay, because if they always had the faster skater start on the inner or the outer, uh, then that would also have some bias in our data. Okay, um, the sample size, I can't remember, it was about 17 or so. Um, and so I should check to make sure that that data is nearly normal. So I actually have it um, already plugged into my calculator. Um, so I will look at um, a histogram. Um, a histogram of, no, you can't see it, I'm sorry. Um, and it looks, yeah, pretty um, uniform and symmetric. There is an outlier kind of um, up on the higher levels, but um, it is pretty close, okay? Um, so nearly normal. The pairwise differences are unimodal, roughly symmetric, okay? So I will perform a paired t-test. Very important. Okay, so now actually do it. So I go um, stat, tests. Again, there is no paired t-test. I just do a normal t-test, number two. And since I have the data, um, I'll pick the first one, data, and my mu sub zero is zero. And list is, I put it in list um, one, and usually it's going to be list three, but I, it's in list one. Uh, my alternate hypothesis is not equal to. I hit calculate, and I get a p-value of 0.3869. So what I say is, uh, my conclusion in context is, with a p-value of 0.3869, which is greater than alpha, I fail to reject the null hypothesis there is not enough evidence to conclude that there was a difference in, in speeds between inner and outer um, speed skating lanes at the 2000, 2006 Winter Olympics. So next is the paired T interval. Okay, this is not as common as the paired T test, which I think is why that one came first. Um, but when the conditions are met, the same ones we talked about earlier, meaning the most important ones were the randomization and the success, sorry, the, um, the nearly normal condition for the pairwise differences, um, then we can find the, um, the confidence interval for the mean of the paired differences using this formula, um, where the standard error is using this formula, and the degrees of freedom is n minus one, okay? So here is an example. Um, how big of a difference is there on average between the ages of husbands and wives? Uh, and I've kind of put in here um, the data that we need. Okay. Um, confidence intervals have four steps. You check the conditions. You state what interval you're doing. You then find the interval and give the conclusion in context. Um, since I don't, I don't want to copy more of the information here, I'm just going to assume that it is from a random sample. And because our n is very large, I can go ahead and use a paired t interval. Okay, the formula is d um, uh, d bar plus or minus t star sub n minus one times um, s sub d over the square root of n. Now t star sub n minus one comes from in the um, t, and they don't tell me. Um, what my confidence level should be. I will choose a 95% confidence level, so 0.975, with the confidence level plus one tail, comma, the number of degrees of freedom, which is 169. Um, and this will be pretty close to our um, Z star value that we've memorized. But we go in here, in the T, 0.975, comma, 169. And I get something that is 1.974, okay? Plus or minus my D 
bar is 2.2 years. That was the average difference times um, 4.1 divided by the square root of n, which is 170. So 2.2 minus 1.974, and I get 1.579 comma 2.82. I'm just going to run this up to 8. Okay, there's my confidence interval. And then my conclusion in context is I'm 95% confident that the difference on average between husbands of, sorry, the ages of husbands and wives is between 1.58 years and 2.82 years. Okay, and this video was about um, the paired t-test and the paired t-interval. Um, thank you so much for watching.